Good morning, everybody. A lot of times when the timer ticks down, I have this last minute panic, like did, did I remember to, to unclick the loop button? Because otherwise it'll go like two, one, zero. And then right as I'm about to say good morning, it'll start up at five minutes again. But this, this time we're all set, so that was good. Let's pray and then let's uh, jump into worship. God, thank you for this morning. You are so good. I would submit this time to you. Ask that you, that you would put your blessing on it, that you would be pleased with our offering of worship. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's go ahead and stand. Oh, wow. I'm going to make one quick adjustment here. All right, if you guys remember this song, this one has the, has the boy parts and girl parts. Or, or well, you can really sing whatever part you want. But at one point of the song, there's going to be words in yellow and words in white. together. I will sing to and worship the King who is worthy. I will love and adore Him. I will bow down before Him. I will sing to and worship the King who is worthy. I will love and adore Him. I will bow down before Him. You're my Prince of Peace, and I will live my life for You. All right, now we're going to sing the other part all together. Sing it again, you are holy. You are holy. Yeah. 
That was awesome. Good job, guys. Let's sing that one more time. I will sing to and worship your kingdom is worthy. I will love and adore him. I will bow down before him. I will sing to of peace and I will live my life for you my prince of peace and I will live my life for you Jesus you are so good sing holy holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and leave me in your love to the Every song we could ever sing, and you're worthy of every praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Oh, you're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Let's sing holy. Oh, holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes and the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, oh, you're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you.
I will build. And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. And I will put my trust in you.
serves thee unto his wings, yea, so gently sustaining. Hast thou not seen how thy desires have been granted in what he ordained? To the Lord who doth prosper thy work and defend me. Surely his goodness and mercies do you daily attend me. Wonder anew what the Almighty can do. With his love he befriend Praise to the Lord, oh let all that is in me adore him. All that hath life and breath come now with praises before. Let the amen. Let the amen sound from his people again. Gladly for all we adore As we jump into this next song, I'm going to invite you to begin walking forward to get your communion elements. So back half of the room, we're going to ask you to walk up first. Of course, you can raise your hand if you'd like us to bring the elements to you. And we will worship while we walk. Spread out the skies over empty space. You said that there be light to a dark, formless world. You lie, was born. You spread out your arms over empty hearts. You said that there be light. To a dark and homeless world, your son was born. Oh, you made the world and saw that it was good. And you sent the only son for you are good. What a wonderful. What a wonderful Savior How majestic your whispers How humble your love With a strength like no other In the heart of fully see how beautiful the cross we have only heard 
the faintest whispers of how great you are. No eye has fully seen how beautiful the cross, and we have only heard the faintest whispers of how great You made the world saw that it was good And you sent your only son for you are good What a wonderful maker What a wonderful Savior sacrifice, the death on the cross, and then the ultimate hope through the resurrection. Thank you for giving us your word and telling us just how you would like us to commemorate your ultimate sacrifice through Holy Communion. Speaking of sacrifice, as we head into this week uh, with Armed Forces Day yesterday and Memorial Day uh, less than a week away, we pray for those who are making those sacrifices to fight for this country and for our freedoms. Without these folks, we wouldn't have the freedom to worship Jesus Christ. We pray for those that are currently serving. Please protect them, give them courage and wisdom in times of conflict and peace at times of rest. I also pray for those previously served. I pray for relief of the distress they have endured, both mental and physical. Please give them the comfort and peace as they enjoy the fruits of the freedom they fought for. 
Finally, I pray for Ryan in the message this morning. May you speak through Ryan and bless this congregation, convicting us to walk in your light as we go forward this morning. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Before I, I uh, give the message, uh, I want to recognize someone who has faithfully been a part of our staff, who has faithfully served the body in many different ways and in many ways that go unseen, uh, and that's Sarah Collum. Sarah, do you mind coming up here real fast? Ooh, this is cold. never been up here. Well, welcome. Welcome. I'm going to let you hold these because they're nice and cold. Uh, we do have a box to make it easier to hold those in, in a little bit. Uh, Sarah and Andrew are about to move, but they don't know where yet. So they actually have already sold their house in St. Joseph and have moved into a temporary housing uh, in Urbana, correct? Champagne. Champagne. Uh, while their kids have just graduated, both, uh, both their kids are now going to live in St. Louis, but they're looking at land possibly in Kentucky. They may end up south of St. Louis. That They're not sure yet. Uh, but the end of this month, because they're moving, will be her last time on staff with us. Uh, Sarah has been, uh, she's been absolutely phenomenal. She's asked for us not to do anything really big for her. So uh, this is probably bigger than you're wanting, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I've got to tell you, in the time that I've had an opportunity to know Sarah, I have been incredibly blessed by her heart, uh, by her energy, by her ability to uh, take things as they come, and, and then she, she does her best, she always puts her best out there. Uh, as a staff, before every one of our staff meetings, not all of you realize this, because there's a lot of you and we haven't gotten to all of you yet. Uh, but before our staff meetings every week, we actually pray for one or two of you and we record the prayer and then send that on to you. Uh, hopefully we'll get to everybody uh, as time goes along, but uh, I have been impressed with Sarah's heart and with your ability to hear from the Lord and to share that with everybody. Uh, and so we are going to miss her on staff. Uh, Cassie Champ will be, she's already here part-time. She'll be stepping into a full-time position uh, at the end of the month. And so it'll be a real smooth transition and everything. Uh, but I'd like to just say a prayer for you real fast. Can I put my hand on your shoulder? God, my Heavenly Father, I thank you for Sarah. I thank you for Andrew as well, for the hearts that they have to serve you to show other people your love and to continue to follow you. May you go before them. May you prepare a place for them. May you continue to guide them. In the name of Jesus, amen. You want me to hold that? And then we'll get a box for okay. you. There, there's a box. That way you don't have to. Thanks. You're welcome. I'm just going to set it over here. And this will be for you. So if you see her, feel free to say thank you to her, uh, because she has done a lot. She has done a lot. Uh, in fact, a lot of our finances, just recognizing where there were some, uh, some missteps and some lack of accountability, uh, a long time ago, when she first came on staff, one of the reasons a lot of that started to change is because she noticed those discrepancies first and began to bring it to everybody's attention. So God has been moving through her on the behalf of the whole body in many different ways for a very long time. So please, if you see her, please remember to say thank you to Sarah. All right, I am going to read through a section of scripture that doesn't often get preached from uh, this morning. We're going to open up to Romans chapter 16, starting in verse 1. And hopefully as I get through the message, you'll understand why 
this is what I'm going to start with. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, who is a servant of the church in Centrea. So you should welcome her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints and assist her in whatever matter she may, may require your help. For indeed, she has been a benefactor of many and of me also. Give my greetings to Prisca and Aquila, my co-workers in Christ Jesus, who risk their own necks for my life. Not only do I thank them, but so do all the Gentile churches. Greet also the church that meets in their home. Greet my dear friend Epinetus, who is the first convert to Christ from Asia. Greet Mary, who has worked very hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my fellow Jews and fellow prisoners. They are noteworthy in the eyes of the apostles, and they were also in Christ before me. Greet Ampliatus, my dear friend in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and my dear friend Sacchus. Greet Apelles, who is approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herodian, my fellow Jew. Greet those who belong to the household of Narcissus, who are in the Lord. Greet Tryphena and Tryphosa, who have worked hard in the Lord. Greet my dear friend Persis, who has worked very hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, also his mother and mine. Greet Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Petrobus, Hermas, and the brothers and sisters who are with them. Greet Philogus and Julia, Nerus and his sister, and Olympus and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ send you greetings. Pray. God, my heavenly Father, God, we come before you as a room filled with saints in St. Joseph. We come before you because others have laid the foundations before us. We come before you not as an individual, but as a body, as a church family. May you greet us as we greet you, Lord Jesus. In your name, amen. As a side note, that verse at the end, all the churches of Christ send you greetings, is where the denomination Church of Christ derives its name to be the body of Christ. That's the scripture that it's taken out of. Recently, as we've been going through a bunch of old files and old boxes and things that have been kept and trying to decide what needs to continue to be kept and what needs to be shredded or just simply disposed of, uh, Sarah came across this, an annual report for 2006. Now, we could have gone back even older. We could have found some others after this. But she found this, and it's interesting to me that what it says on the front, it says, inside out, having Christ's compassion for the community. Now, the vision statement that I've brought before you, that I've spoken of time in and time again, is that I want to see, that we want to see a church family that is able to go deep in the Word, that is inside, so that we can be visible in God's kingdom in St. Joseph. This is outside. This is having Christ's compassion for the community. Uh, as this was written by Tom Anders, it was prepared not just by Tom Anders, but actually by some of you who are in this room now. Uh, as I've looked at other things from other pastors in the past, there have been similar visions that have been brought before all of you from multiple men who have taken on the role as lead pastor, a senior pastor here in St. Joseph. What that tells me is that there is a vision that God has for this body that he keeps bringing before you from multiple people over the course of many different years. And the phrasing might be a little bit different, but it is the same vision to be built up in the word of God 
so that we can affect this community for Jesus Christ. This is God's vision for this church family. Now, it's interesting as I look through this, there are a lot of names. And I actually sat there with uh, Dave Burton in my office earlier this week and um, asked him about some of the names. Of the names that I highlighted that were unique, there were about 100, 101, 102. Many of those have passed on. They've passed away. They served the church. They served the church. And their names are written in here. And I'm not going to go through some of the names, but those of you who are related to would likely be able to know who I'm talking about. They served the body faithfully. There are some names of people who have moved out of state. They've moved away. They've moved away. And so because they've moved away, they are no longer here to serve the body. But while they were here, they served faithfully to build up this community of believers. There are other names in here who still live around St. Joseph, who no longer attend our church family. I don't bring them up to shame them or anything. If they're being fed somewhere, I want them to be fed wherever they are. The point isn't to necessarily try to make them come back here. That's not why I say that. The reason I bring it up is that sometimes people leave because they experience hurt or division of some sort, and that is a tactic of the enemy to try to divide the church, to try to divide the community. There are going to be things through the course of my time here, through the course of this church's history, that you aren't necessarily going to like. You're not necessarily going to agree with everything. My goal is to always bring you before the cross, is to bring you to the Word of God and to preach faithfully from the Word of God, not from my own personal opinion. That doesn't mean that there won't be some things that will be let out in that maybe you might not agree with. That maybe there's something in the building that you hold on to as a bit of a sacred cow that you can't let go of because you can't see that it could be different. This happens all the time in churches across the world where we hold on to things rather than looking at God, rather than looking at what can happen as we pursue Jesus in a place, we look at how things used to be. And it inhibits our ability to move forward. But the ability to move forward is always going to be based on those who are serving faithfully. Not serving the name of a person outside of the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to come to the message more in a second. What I want to share with you are some of the things that we have, some of the needs that we have. And I'm hesitant to share them now because I'm afraid that if I share them now, you're going to be thinking about those things throughout the rest of the message. You're going to miss the point. You're going to miss the message. And I very dearly want to be able to give you a message from the Word, from the Lord We have areas in our church family that we need your help with. A lot of areas. This is not just this is not just children's ministry, although children's ministry often gets gets thrown up there as the biggest need, right? And it's a big need. We'd like to expand, create new classrooms in the children's ministry. There are areas in the children's ministry that we need help with. There are areas within the youth ministry that we need help with. There's the the proverb that that light hands or many hands make light work. The more that help out in an area that, that, that do the work of the Lord to build up a community of believers means that the burden is spread throughout and you're less likely to have burnout and to feel the need to fall away. And this burden falls on all of us. If you have breath in your lungs, there's something you can do. Even if, even if it's, I dedicate myself to praying. I dedicate myself to praying. Because that's another one of the areas that we need help with. 
is an intercession team. Gina Tebbaugh has been phenomenal at leading an intercession team. Gina, are you here? You're here. You're, I, all I see is your, your awesome shining hair right now. The, the light is shining. You're haloed. You're an angel. Gina does a phenomenal job organizing a prayer ministry. They meet in a prayer chapel, or you don't even have to go to the prayer chapel on Sunday morning. You can pray wherever you are. But giving the call and the need for prayer, that's one area to serve and to be involved. We have so many areas. You have in your bulletin, you have one of these inserts. And I know you need a smartphone to scan the QR code, but we also have paper signups in the back. There are multiple areas to get involved to build up the body of believers here, to encourage one another, to spur one another on to good works, to get involved. Now, all of those, those ministries also rely on the tithe and being invested in your faith, in your time, in your energy, and in your finances to see that the ministries in the kingdom of God is built up here in the community where you live. Where you live. We have so many people that live in St. Joseph, that take their faith outside of St. Joseph. This has been one of my prayers for the past several weeks. We have so many that take their faith outside and are invested in other communities and not in their neighborhoods and not in those that live right around them. I pray for this village. I pray for the town. I pray for St. Joseph. We have a lot of areas to get involved. We have a lot of needs. If you need prayer, if you need visitations, hey, I can't be the only one doing visitations, and I'm not, thank goodness. There are a lot of other people that visit when somebody is sick, when somebody is in the hospital. We have a lot of people. I'd like to know if you'd be willing to be one of those people, because I can't be everywhere all at once. People need care. They need People that will sit with them and to know that they're valued, to know that they're part of the body and have value here, no matter what's going on. There are things in the body just around the building that we need to update. Some of it's going to cost a lot of money. I don't like the cost of the money when I look at it. I don't like the cost of the money. Some of it may require having to have a church building fundraiser. And that building fundraiser has to be given generously above the tithe because the tithe exists to serve the ministries, to see that the ministries that we have continue. You can't have a building fundraiser and just simply replace the tithe and call it building fundraiser. It has to be separate, above and beyond, to be a cheerful, cheerful giver. And some of these things are... Things like remodeling the gym, whether that gives remodeled to a chapel or if it restains, uh, remains as a gym. I don't care which one it is, so long as it is being used and stewarded well for the kingdom of God here in this church family. Either way. But that's going to cost a lot of money. I mean, we're talking one hundred and fifty dollars to $300,000. That's going to cost a lot of money. I'm going to look into some grants to see if it's possible to fund some of it that way as well. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. But we have a responsibility to steward what the Lord has given us. Not just the finances, but the building as well. To steward it well. And not just the building, but we have a responsibility as the leaders to steward you well. To steward your hearts to bring you into the word of God, to bring you into community, to disciple you so that you are also discipling others and reaching out and bringing them in to the kingdom. Stewardship is so important. We want to install security cameras throughout the building. In this day and age, hey, you know, that's a necessity. It's not optional. For the security of our children, for the protection of our volunteers that nobody can bring a false accusation against them. I want a camera pointing directly at my office so that nobody can bring a false accusation against me. It is necessary in this day and age, and that's going to cost some money. It's also going to cost some labor to have a group of people that can pull wires through the building 
and get everything set up, which would save us about $20,000 if we pull that wire ourselves. I know that because I have the quote. We also have all the wire already here. Dwayne Baxley was able to work it out with his son, who works for a company that makes the wire, who has donated, how much, Dwayne, miles, miles worth of wire? Yeah, that's a lot of wire. It's here already here in the building. It just has to be pulled, donated to us, because God loves us and is looking out for us and is seeing provision happen in multiple different ways. The cameras themselves are going to cost about $16,000 to have them fully installed. 32 cameras throughout the building, throughout building of, you know, some of the buildings 100 years old or more and others are not, but it takes a while to get all that installed. There's a cost for remodeling the sign out front. Now the high end that I've been quoted at closer to around 36,000 for a digital sign. I'm not doing that. I have no problem with digital sign. I would love to have a digital sign, but I'm not going to spend $36,000 of your tithe to install a digital sign. Can I get an amen on that? <laughs> 10,000 I could probably do because there's a lot of benefit to having a digital sign, a lot of benefit to it, but I'm not doing 36,000. So we're looking at options for that. We want to get more quotes for that. We have things here in the sanctuary or around the building that need to be redone. There are things within the stage that need to be redone. Painting in here, this is one of the areas where you could scan a code and sign up to be part of this, ideally through the month of June because we have summer in the street. We're not going to be in here. It's a great time to paint. It's a great time to paint. There is one piece of the stage that needs to be redone that I understand had been done this way in the past, but it was done inappropriately and with a lack of communication. But the heart behind it and the reason behind it was actually very sound. And so I want to give you some of the vision behind that because it's probably going to go back to that. That thing, fully aware that some of you may not like this, is that this wall, not the baptistry, but this wall needs to be painted black. The vision behind that and the reason behind that is you have two large speakers up here for the organ that are black that stand out from everything else. A black wall will help mask that so that it's not a distraction. It also helps mask all the extra wires that are up here, which means that we get to come in here, and when you come in here and you sit or you stand for worship, you're not looking at chaos, at clutter, but you can look at something that appears more clean and organized. It's also a matter for the live stream as well, because we have more and more people that need to worship at home for different reasons. My own bride is at home today, worshiping from home, because she's been laid out with a migraine headache since Thursday night. I want people who have to be able to worship at home, and when they turn on our stream, that they, it sounds good. And it looks good, and it's not distracting. So having a black screen means that the camera can focus a lot better on the worship team or on myself or whoever is up here preaching. It'll look cleaner. It will look cleaner. What we're not going to do is do smoke machines. I'm not doing laser lights. Having a black wall behind us is not about showmanship. It is about presenting what you're looking at in a way that helps direct your hearts and your eyes to the message and to worship. A black wall will also help what we see in Jesus up there stand out even more. We've also spoken with electrician, hopefully to get a light box built behind there so that that is cleaner and better lit. There are things that need to be done in the body. And we, I'm asking you to work with me, to work together, to continue to build up this community so that we steward what the Lord has given us well. Well. These names have come before you. You're here now and will come before others in the future.
In Acts chapter 6, we have a call for, call for leaders. In those days as the disciples were increasing in number, there arose a complaint by, by the Hellenistic Jews against the Hebraic Jews that their widows were being overlooked in the daily, daily distribution. Let me explain that difference there. Hellenistic Jews were the Jews that did not live in Jerusalem. They're the ones, the diaspora, they're the ones that had spread out around Greece, around Rome. They had spread out from Jerusalem. They had accepted a more Greek way of life. The Hebraic Jews were distinguishing between them and were not caring for the widows as they should. The twelve, meaning the twelve apostles, summoned the whole company of the disciples and said, it would not be right for us to give up preaching the word of God to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, select from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the spirit and wisdom, whom we can appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole company. So they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas and Nicholas, a convert from Antioch. They had them stand before the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly in number, and a large group of priests became obedient to the faith. They saw the need. In this case, the need was to care for and serve widow widows to distribute the goods appropriately, to steward the tithe. They saw the need. They also recognized division and knew that something needed to be done to prevent further division, to bring about unity. The solution was to spread the responsibilities amongst multiple people. Not just the seven men who were chosen to be leaders, because I'm certain that those seven men gathered together people with them to serve with them. They were just simply the leaders. They appointed leaders, managers, ministers. We often call them deacons. All the work, all of it is important to care for the disciples of Christ and to continue in teaching. See, there are a lot of things that I'd love to see done here. I cannot be the only one doing them. I cannot be at every hospital visit and home visit. I cannot also spend the hours that it takes to write the sermon uh, and, and to also prepare classes that need to be taught and to do this and this and this. And I can't be the only one. In order for some of those things to happen, this body needs you to see the need, to recognize the vision and to seek unity rather than dividing, but to see that the kingdom in St. Joseph grows in accordance to the love of God. And the same is true not just of me, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick on Mark for a second. The same is also true of Mark. Mark leads worship. He also oversees all of our small groups. How wonderful would it be if somebody were to step up to be the lead over small groups that submits to his leadership to help see that vision take place, but that the organization and the training of all the leaders comes from that person rather than Mark, because Mark can't do it all. The same is going to be true for all of us in leadership so that we can focus on the things the Lord has appointed to us to focus on. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 10, the scripture is going to come up there, but I'm just going to tell you the story and kind of just filter through the scriptures. Um, we get this really cool story of Samuel as a little boy in the house of Eli. And three times, three times he wakes up to this, the voice of God saying, Samuel, First couple of times, the first couple of times, Samuel goes into Eli's room, wakes up Eli and says, what, what did you want? Why don't you call my name? You know, he says, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. And finally, he says, hey, it wasn't me. It must be God. You need to respond. And so when Samuel hears God call out, 
Samuel. Samuel responds and says, Here I am. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Every single one of us, if you have come to faith in Jesus Christ, have heard the voice of God call out to your heart, call out to your soul. You have the call on your life. How are you going to respond when you hear that call? When you know unequivocally that God has spoken to you to say, Church of Christ in St. Joseph, will we stand up and say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Will we do as Isaiah was when he was called? When God says, who will go and do this thing? Who will go and tell these people? This is Isaiah chapter 6 if you want to read it. Who will go and tell these people? And Isaiah says, here I am, Lord, send me. Here I am, Lord. Those two, those two responses are so close to my heart. I crave that response in my own life. To be able to say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening, and here I am, God, send me. Send me. How will you respond to the call that the Lord has given you? In James, we get a section of Scripture that talks about works. It is often uh, used for many different ways and different reasons, and hopefully I will not take it out of context as many have used it before in order to manipulate people into doing works. Because I believe that works are a natural outpouring of our faith. They are the fruit that is revealed from our faith. This is why faith without works is dead, because if faith does not produce works, it's not really faith. This is the same as what I had when I was a child, and I knew a whole lot about God. I knew a lot of things about scripture. I would go and my brothers and I would enter all the Bible knowledge contests. And frankly, my younger brother and I often won the Bible knowledge contest amongst statewide competitors because we had the knowledge. And it's not a clapping thing. I wasn't bragging. The point is, is I had that knowledge That doesn't mean I actually knew God. It doesn't mean that just because I had the knowledge that my life at all reflected Jesus Christ. Because what I actually had was a whole lot of performance and feeling like I had to look and toe the line and be the perfect little Christian person that I was supposed to be so I did not shame my family. That's what I was taught that's how I was. That's how many of us when we're raised in the church, and I'm not alone in this, that's how many of us are. It wasn't until I was older that I realized I could actually have a true relationship with Jesus. That God genuinely loves me and desires my presence and my heart. And then faith is born. Faith is born. And love is produced because I had a hope in heaven. And then the works were no longer out of performance, but they came out of faith. Starting in verse 14. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but does not have works? Can such faith save him? If a brother or sister is without clothes and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, stay warm, and be well fed, but you don't give them what the body needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith, if it doesn't have works, is dead by itself. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without works, and I will show you faith by my works. You believe that God is one? Good. Even the demons believe, and they shudder. I'm going to stop right there. Mostly because I have a lot of other things to get through. We're running a long time because I'm chatty today. Our faith produces the works. The works don't produce faith, except... That my works done as a result of my faith reveal my faith to you, reveal my faith to those in the community, 
And therefore, those works partner with the Holy Spirit to produce faith in them. That then also spurs others on to good works. This is the heart of discipleship. The heart of servanthood. The heart of valuing others even beyond ourselves. I think about faith like this. If you can imagine that faith is a road, a long, winding road, love is the vehicle that's on that road. Love is the vehicle, and the hope is our destination. A road without anyone to travel upon it is useless. A road without a set destination is meaningless. God has given us a road map called the way that is Jesus Christ to lead us towards eternity. He has shown us love and given us wisdom, shown us how to be loving, how to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, to love our neighbors as ourselves, so that as we journey the road of faith towards the destination of hope, we become guideposts to all the other sojourners on the road, helping direct them towards hope, helping direct them to Christ. God guides us in faith ever closer to him and to our hope in heaven. And our love for him spills over to one another. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 through 25 says this and let us watch out for one another to provoke love and good works not neglecting to gather together as some are in the habit of doing but encouraging each other and all the more as you see the day approaching our ministries the different things you can serve and become involved in our ministries ought to serve this purpose to consider one another they ought to be considerate they ought to provoke love in yourself and in one another. They ought to produce good works born out of our shared faith. And they ought to provide opportunities to gather together for encouragement as we journey towards heaven. Psalm 37.3 says, Trust in the Lord and do what is good. Dwell in the land and live securely. Put your faith Put your trust in the Lord. Do what is good. The doing what is good comes out of being faithful. Good works are any acts, any fruit that is an outpouring of our faith that is in alignment with the nature of God and his goodness. Trust in the Lord as you serve him, as you pursue him. Do what is good. Do what is righteous. Do what is just. Put down roots in the land. Dwell in the land and live securely. Put down roots where the Lord has planted you. Live securely in your faith and with one another. And if you see someone who's not secure in their faith, help them. Maybe the Lord has revealed that to you because he's calling you to help them. Provoke love. Provoke good works. This family tree in the kingdom of God needs each of you. Needs each of us, myself included, to dwell securely here. To reveal God's faithfulness through our outpouring of love for him and for one another. To remember that those who have come before us have been remembered as you'll be remembered by those who come after you. By the grace of God, you truly are the saints in St. Joseph. And he has appointed you to this time and this place to build his kingdom. You are not just another brick in the wall. You are not just someone to be taken advantage of. You are necessary and needed and valued in the kingdom here. Will you respond to the call? Will you put down roots of faith, hope, and love here? Will you? 
Will you look at this and consider? Consider that maybe if, if the act of service is part of our Christian walk, then it's not a question of saying, God, do you want me to? It's not a question of if he's saying, do you want me to? It's a question of saying, God, when, where, and for whom will you have me serve? And you ask God that. May your roots go deep in the Lord, deep in the word of God, deep in the river of life. May you drink deep from scripture as you study it and to share his heart with one another. May your branches grow tall and spread out. And may our shared ministries bring shade and comfort to those in sin. May they draw new saints to us, prepared to be sent into the expansion of his kingdom. My Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love. I thank you that you have given us opportunities to come before you, to worship you, to serve you, to love you, to love one another. God, open our hearts to what it is that you would have us do. And God, those who have been faithfully serving, I ask that you refresh their hearts and their spirits, their minds and their bodies. May we come alongside them and lift their arms up, God, because it takes all of us. But more than that, it takes you. And where you are weak, we can be strong because of your strength. Thank you, God, for moving through our weakness. I ask for continued vision, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, can we go ahead and have the lights come on up? The art of family. It gets messy, as you can read in the bulletin. You read through that. But we are a messy picture together. Sometimes we bleed outside of the lines. But we are a wonderful picture together. I want to welcome all of our visitors. If you are visiting today, sincerely, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we do have a gift for you. If you'd like to go to the Welcome Center desk, you can pick up a gift for you. Please fill out one of the connection cards. Let us know that you're here so that we can just reach out to you and say thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, gentlemen, do you want to come on forward? We are going to collect the tithe. Uh, as I said before, the tithe is used in order, to, in order to support the ministries here in this body. It is an act of worship an act of sacrificing uh, our own provision in order to give to the ministries that we are all benefiting from here in this church family. Uh, so I want to say a prayer over the tithe. Uh, there are many other ways to give. If you don't want to put it in person, you can give online. Uh, you can text to give. It's pretty simple to do any of that. Uh, and I also want to mention too, you know, we do have some of the streets coming up and often it makes it very difficult to collect tithe and I don't want to see the ministries take a hit through June. Uh, so I would encourage you, if, if we don't have it in person, please consider one of these other ways through June. God, my Heavenly Father, thank you for your provision. God, help us have wisdom in how to steward the tithe. To steward your provision, to steward not just the tithe, but the people's hearts and the building and all that you have given us. Thank you, God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Right. I do have just a few announcements. Um, hey, first of all, I do want to give you a quick finance update while they're collecting the tithe. So I mentioned a few weeks ago, uh, if you remember, I told you that I did some statistics where I saw that through. Um, statistically, the average loss in 2022, that each month we were spending almost $6,000 beyond what was coming in with the tithe. Now, some of that is because the, the tithe was not as high, and some of it is also because things were just needed to be spent, such as uh, Kyle leaving and bringing me on. That's, that's a big expense. So it's not, it was you average it all out, I have a lot of grace and understanding for that. Uh, that happens. Uh, last month in April, 
is the first time in a long time that we did not have any loss. So much so, it's awesome. And I, it's the staff and the way the Lord is leading. God, please don't. It's, it's them. And also you giving and getting the heart for the tithe and understanding it more. So last year, we averaged a loss of $6,000 a month. If we were to remove the loss that we had averaged out January through March, uh, the bulk of that was because Becca left. Uh, and so if you were to remove that, then January, uh, February, and March, our loss was only $100. If you take out the other, right? That's, that's awesome. In April, we saved 4000 We did not spend 4000 of what came in. That is a huge difference. So if you see our staff or our elders, please tell them thank you. But do not forget that provision is because of the Lord and from the Lord alone as he works through you. All glory is to be given to God for all things on heaven and in earth. All right, announcements. We do have underground tonight. Is the last time we have underground until July. Uh, and so I would encourage the teens to come to this tonight, 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Uh, I think we're going to work on some different things, maybe in June and some other activities and everything. Uh, so parents, pay attention to that. But please come to the underground tonight. Uh, this coming Saturday, I'm very excited about this. Uh, we have a missionary coming to get to know you. Uh, they, would, they reached out to Sarah and I. They were already on my heart about bringing them in here, uh, but I never reached out to them uh, primarily because uh, I wanted to make sure it was clear with the elders of how missionaries could be moved around and, and what's going on. Uh, the Weigelts, Sarah and I have known them since 2011. They are missionaries in Romania. They have two teenage uh, children, a son and a daughter, or a daughter and a son. And they have not been able to come back to the States on furlough in four years because of, uh, because of coronavirus. It held them back. And so they are all here now. Uh, they're from Canada, but their mission base is in Kansas City. Uh, and so I'm very familiar with a lot of the people with that mission base, that, that unit, um, or nonprofit agency. Uh, and so they are in Kansas City right now. They're at the church where I served in Kansas City, worshiping this morning and will be here this coming weekend. So I would love to encourage you. I know it's Memorial Day weekend. If you can bring a dessert to share, come up here next Saturday at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock, get to know the Weigelts. Uh, they're a wonderful family. They'll be here with us in worship service next Sunday. Uh, I'm very excited to, to have you meet them, and then we can uh, pursue whether or not the church will begin supporting them in missions monthly as well but they desire relationship with you and that is so vital when it comes to our missionaries um, i want to tell you next week we have a special worship service we're also going to have a couple of baptisms uh, the worship service will be will be different uh, for be starters when we begin worship it will start with a brief message i will get up and share briefly so if you show up late you're going to miss some of that you're going to miss the instruction saying, this is why we're doing what we're doing. And then our worship is going to be dedicated, the time will be dedicated to worship, where we will start with a cappella worship. We will then bring in the organ and the piano. We will have communion. We will bring in the band with all of it. My son is going to start playing the organ. He's going to shift over, and he's going to play the organ when we're doing contemporary worship music where we'll do contemporary with that we will build it up and it's going to be wonderful and the whole point of it is to show you that it's not the style that matters or the instrument that's being played what matters in worship is your heart before the lord it's your heart and so i hope that you'll join us next week as we worship god in this beautiful way together we do have Summer of the Street coming up. There are going to be many ways to get involved with that. Baptism's also next week. 
Uh, we, there are many ways to get involved with some of the street. We have different themes. We'll send out some information about that. Uh, if you want to participate in the pie baking contest on the first night of the month, let us know. Uh, Sarah Collins has been making this really cool trophy for that. Uh, we're going to have a, a cornhole tournament the second week of the month. Uh, do any of you play cornhole? Oh, okay, Jeremiah does. Okay, they do. Frank's over there like it's, it's in the bag. <laughs> so we're going to have a cornhole tournament. We'll have a tug-of-war tournament. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm really looking forward to summer in the street. So you'll have to bring your lawn chairs with you to sit outside. Uh, we'll have the worship service and the message and some games and activities and everything each week through June. All right, with that said, I am going to say a prayer. God, my Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for this family. I thank you for the way that you have moved time and time again through the people who are here and for the people that have come before us. God, in the name of Jesus, I ask for your blessing over those who are here. I ask for your blessing over those who are no longer here. I ask, God, that you continue to open their eyes and our eyes to see you wherever we may be. Thank you, God, for your love. Thank you, God, that you give us life and love, that your Holy Spirit has moved to create faith, and that you have that faith directed towards a hope that we may not see now, but that we know is real as we journey together one step ahead, always towards heaven. In the name of Jesus, amen. Be blessed, and we'll see you next week.